do I write a set list? Yeah. Other than with a pen. <laughs> uh, a marker. Um, I see what key, you know, certain songs are in. I pick out like the songs that I think the crowd would like and the songs that I like the best, which don't always match up. Uh, and try to get a mixture of those so I'm happy playing this, the set list and uh, want to make sure that the crowd is happy listening to the set. And then I have to put everything together to make sure keys and tempos can be close enough to make segues work and so on. And uh, sometimes it just falls right together and other times I end up spending a couple hours just sitting there staring at a blank piece of paper <laughs> trying to figure it out. Sometimes it comes together really, you know, like I've written a couple sets where like I think of it almost as it ends up being like the whole night ends up being like um, a play for me, you know. And then other times it's just so frustrating that you end up with a weird mishmash of songs just based on the amount of material you have to work with and just whatever kind of baggage you're personally dealing with at the same time. So uh, but you know that's that's the basic gist of it. It's 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 half it's half technique and half inspiration, I guess. I, I don't know. I haven't counted. I, I would say we probably have about a hundred that we move around that we could play without having to um, do more than a few rehearsals doing like mo most likely I could probably pick from a, about a hundred songs and play a set where we didn't get a sound check in beforehand uh, and then there's you know other songs that we really enjoy playing but we we don't do that often that we need some time to get together and work on but it's not you know those are the songs that aren't necessarily in our rotation a lot of them are covers and some are songs that we just stopped playing years ago, uh, and we have to kind of remember how to play them. Oh, hey, wait, we'll never get the street. Yeah, I can't tell you how many people were yelling at me to vote for canned pastries. Canned pastries, yeah. Well, you know, the funny thing about canned pastries is when everyone was asking to play it, I was thinking of a different song. I was thinking, I, I had forgot about how the song went, so I, I remember I, I used to get, even, even back in the day when we played them both, I got that confused with Defrost Kelly. Uh, they're, they're kind of similar uh, in structure and everything, so I, I had forgot I had all those cool parts, so it, it was, it was um, I was glad to relearn that song. But that, that's another one that would take a few more times for me to... Like we, every time we play it, we'd have to. If we put it on the set list, we'd have to take some, a few, a, you know, at least a, an hour or a half hour of relearning the song before the show. I'm gonna give you the worst answer. Excellent. <laughs> I I just pick songs. I don't have <laughs> any. I really don't have any, and it, it, people talk about set lists all the time, and I don't, I've never gone to a show and been either disappointed or impressed by the set list. If they play songs I like to hear, then that's awesome. That's all I really care about is seeing a band play, but there's all this, you know, this song shouldn't have been there. It's a bad place in the set to play it, and I'm like, I don't understand any of that. So I just pick songs and write them out, and then if certain songs, if I could figure out how to get from one to the other without stopping playing, then I draw a little arrow. If I can't, then I don't draw the arrow. <laughs> it's not, I don't think of these like, out there, like, oh, if we did, I don't know. For the last year, uh, about a year, we've just been going alphabetically through all five. You know, back <clears throat> when I first came back in the band, and up until not very long ago, Vin and I didn't write them at all. Uh, just Rob, Chuck, and Al. Do you think this was a bias against people who hit things, or I, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of that that uh, drummer profiling 
<laughs> the guy who hangs out with musicians. Um, I've <laughs> <but laughs> never heard you that never heard before. That. <laughs> that one's great. We have, we have our, our big sheet of songs, uh, covers and whatever. It's, almost all of it is in rotation. Some stuff is on there that we haven't played in a while for good reason. And uh, I tend to, the, all the stuff that we've played in the past four or five days is crossed off or marked. So we don't. We don't get stuff. And uh, I tend to go through and just pick stuff that uh, if I see it and I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just circle it, circle it, circle it. Go through, get a bunch of stuff that maybe in the moment appeals to me, and then I start trying to string together a couple of weird segues, something that sounds like we haven't done it in a while or that we've never done before. And so I start building it out of these chunks. Pick a good first song, uh, pick good set enders and, and encores, and uh, yeah, just string it together however I can. Um, I, I go so far as well to go to go on on the line and uh, look up like the last time had we played in this venue before I would go back and see what we played last time in Kent or last time in Akron or last time in, you know whatever that venue is. Um, so you don't close the duster twice? Yeah so just, so if somebody if the only chance that they get to see us is in their hometown so that next time they come we don't play the same damn songs. So I try and do that sometimes. I think sometimes like if I get to, we get to the city, it's like noon, I'm writing a set list, sound checks at like four, uh, usually it's probably like three and I'm writing a set list. Um, I think that sometimes subconsciously I, I remember songs that we played the last time we were here and they find their way in the sets. So I was starting to kind of uh, get a little paranoid about doing that, maybe having people be pissed off because they saw Captain America the last three times that we came to, you know, the, the, area. the Stone Pony or wherever. You know, like it's, I don't know if it's, if it's one of those things where my brain maybe works that way sometimes. So I try not to repeat things. I, I really try and stay away from stuff like that doing similar segues, similar songs in the set, I really try to make it as unique as possible. So I don't know if there's anything else that really goes into it. And, and also if there's something like, uh, if lyrics or context uh, dictate, I might choose songs that are appropriate for that night, for the venue, for people that are gonna be there. I approach it uh, by groove. Ah. I want the whole show to flow in a groove all night long. So I don't ever worry about, you know, when when the guys on the melodic instruments approach setlist, they approach it on how the key changes work or mm -hmm. how the keys stay the same so they can jam into each other. I approach it on how the groove works to to uh, flow and I think the jams work best when the groove flows best throughout the jam more so than trying to fit the keys together because sometimes the grooves don't work and then the whole thing kind of gets a little disjointed so that so I approach it on how to build off the groove all night long I like that me too <laughs> Put your set lists out every night. Right. It'd be nice if you like one of y'all just signed it. It's not a bad idea. Okay. Not a bad it. idea. It's a, it's in alphabetical order. And that. Yeah. So once you know who wrote one, then you should just follow along, and then you could pretty much follow along all the way through. There's some pretty anal mo fans who can figure it probably, out. Probably. You know, Plus, so you can. That. I think we all have a different style, and a lot of times you can tell. Who wrote the list by the style and the way it was written? See, my memory's for shit. Me so, too. So you know. You know. <laughs> yes, it is bad again. Yeah. They all go in one ear and out the other because they're, they're aimed at me. Oh. I take offense. So oh. Fuck everybody that says a freaking drummer joke. Oh. A band can't be a band without a good drummer. No, well, no, you're. I got I got good opposite ones. The band's only as good as your drummer. There you go. I don't know that that's a joke per se. It's not. It's the but opposite. It's the true. It's a truth. A no. truism. Well, 
um, you know, there's, you know, I, I kind of start with a framework and I look at what, obviously, what we've been doing. And so, you know, go through and cross off a bunch of stuff that's sort of ineligible. And then I look at what's left. And, you know, I always sort of consider the opener and the closers for each set. Um, and then, you know, another factor I consider is like, well, what's something we haven't played in a long time? Or what would be kind of cool to play that would be a little out of the ordinary? Or what would be different to maybe open the show with? So it's not just something, like, there's certain things that we could do, like, let's say, not coming down Wormwood, okay, all right. Just works. You know, it's the, the China Rider of our set that we can just throw out there and, like, works. And we know it could be an opener, it could be a closer, it could be an encore. It works in a lot of different places, and we know we can just throw that in there and it'll work. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes you want something that's just going to be like a solid, functional tool. And on the other hand, you want something that's just going to like completely mess with people, and so you put on Rec as an opener instead, or something different, depending on the situation. You know, if we were playing like a matinee set for children, we wouldn't put on Rec Chem as the opener. But late night show or something different or it's like clearly playing to a bunch of like serious like morons, I would, you know, start to think more along those lines. Or, you know, maybe try and sneak in something like Johnny Line Up and see if I get away with it. Like see if it passes muster with the rest of the band, you know, without then without it getting vetoed before we make it to the stage or sometimes it just doesn't get noticed, you know, or every now and then I'll try and pull off something like that. You know, you just put Long Island Girls on the set list and see what happens. I'm saying, like, every now and then, like, I'll do stuff like that and just write it down and then sometimes I'll just say, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, we're at soundtrack. Oh, yeah, we, we need to go over this because we're playing it tonight. Oh, if there are no objections, like, we'd go over and then we just play it tonight. And, you know, I'm, I don't know, I'm pretty open to playing just about anything that's in our repertoire and will anytime, anywhere, as long as we actually know how to play it. You know, a lot of times fans will come to us and say, oh, play that really obscure song that you haven't played in 30 years. Now, like, yeah, nobody knows that, you know? Maybe one guy in the band could pull it off right now and actually, like, play a pretty good representation of it. But as a band, we would sound horrible doing that, and it would be a shame for everybody. Writing the set list, it's like, we'll do uh, Walt with one of my songs and... Oh, that. Yeah, I, I actually tend to. Uh, I, I, uh, what's what's the word? I I, um, I I tend to write my set list actually um, in the other direction. I overcorrect for that um, because I don't want it to seem like I'm putting all of my songs in the thing. I used to actually be very conscious about you know doing. My song, Rob's song, Chuck's song, and just trying to alternate through them like that. But there, there weren't enough Chuck songs to go around, and then the, and then it, like it doesn't always make for a great show that way. And we stop caring about that so much. So we really just want to make a great show. Um, and every now and then, like I'll think about like transitions from parts of songs or other things that like we don't typically do, but. Um, those are the things that I try and manipulate uh, a little bit more. A lot of times I think about them when I'm, you know, on a plane someplace or having nothing to do with work, and then it's just like, oh, we need to... And, you know, you try and recall those three weeks later when you're actually sitting down and writing Write down this. Phone. Yeah, sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. So I have lots of ideas on my phone, but, you know, very few of them are related to most set lists. That intelligence was good, sound intelligence. We know where they are. We need to take it away from the weapons We found the weapons of mass destruction. Thank you.